The Italian Renaissance was one of the most productive periods in the history of art, with large numbers of outstanding masters to be found in many centers and in all the major fields of painting, sculpture, and architecture. In Florence, in the first half of the 15th century, there were great innovators in all these fields. As a result, there was a change in the social status of the artist. Whereas before he had been an artisan, a craftsman, now artists were viewed as practitioners of the liberal arts, which were regarded as being on a higher level than craftsmen and achieved a measure of status and newfound respect. The idea of artistic genius became popular. One of the big changes in art was to paint and sculpt subjects realistically. This is called realism and involves a number of techniques that make the subjects and background look like they would be in real life. This also meant giving the subjects more emotional qualities. Renaissance architects came up with new building strategies. However, the movement demanded new forms of expression from artists as well. For, for example, they found ways to show landscapes in a realistic manner by developing a technique called perspective to produce an impression of depth and distance. While art during the Middle Ages appeared flat, perspective allowed Renaissance artists to produce works that looked three-dimensional. The techniques favored by Florentines were tempera and fresco. For tempera, painting a dry surface was used. A wooden panel was grounded with several coats of plaster or glue, and the composition was then copied from a drawing. The colors were tempered with egg. The fresco technique used for the mural paintings in Florentine churches involved painting on wet plaster. The sketch was first copied on the plaster wall in rough outline, and the part on which the painter was going to work during a given day was then covered with fresh plaster. The painter had to redraw the part that had been covered by the new plaster and add the colors. As the plaster dried, the colors became a permanent part of it. Many new techniques were introduced during the Renaissance. These techniques helped to enhance the quality and realism of the art. We already discussed perspective. It gives the illusion that some objects in the painting are further away than others. Balance and proportion is another technique. Drawing subjects such as they are the correct size when compared to each other. The use of light and dark was also experimented by many artists. They started using light and shadows in their works to add drama, perspective, and timing to their art. Although Renaissance artists continued to paint religious paintings, they also branched out to other subjects, including Greek and Roman mythology, historical subjects, and portraits of individuals. They also focused on the details of everyday life. New styles in the arts weren't limited to painters and sculptors. Renaissance writers got in on the act as well. Instead of using Latin, the language of the church, many wrote in the vernacular or their native language. Authors wrote in their local vernacular rather than in Greek or Latin classical languages, widening the reading audience and promoting the spread of Renaissance ideas. During the Renaissance, architects began to look back to the Roman and Greeks for inspiration when designing buildings. Much of the Renaissance architecture was taken from ancient Rome and Greece and then altered to fit their current lifestyles. The first great Renaissance architect was the Florentine Filippo Brunelleschi. Some historians consider the start of the Renaissance to be 1419 when he won the commission to build the dome above the Cathedral of Florence. He made several trips to Rome to study the remains of ancient buildings and learn the principles that had been used in their construction. The knowledge thus gained helped him to solve the problem of constructing a dome for the Cathedral of Florence. Though the building of the cathedral had begun in the last years of the 13th century, nobody had been able to work out a method of constructing the dome, which had to cover a space 140 feet across. Brunelleschi's solution was the dome that came to dominate the Florentine skyline from 1436.
the year it was completed. Renaissance architecture had some distinct features that were fairly common to major construction. Many buildings were built as square or rectangular symmetrical shapes. The front or the facade of these buildings were generally symmetrical around the vertical axis. They used Roman type columns and arches and domes were popular. This was again taken from the Roman and Greek architecture. These Renaissance artists inspired new forms of expression in art and architecture, which helped make Florence the center of the Renaissance.